Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. We're going to go into part three of the title call 1111, The Establishment. This is the third video to The Establishment. But remember, it's part three of the title call 1111. Let's continue from where we left off. I was speaking concerning and explaining like a day, like the day of Pentecost. But I want to move and go to PowerPoint number two. And PowerPoint number two, I had you write down Genesis 41, verse 39 to 49. And then I also had you write down Haggai chapter two, verse 23. And then I simply had you write down not only the words segment ring, but I believe later on I told you and explained to you that has to do with kingdom authority in authority in the kingdom as a believer. Now, I've already for the last several years have taught concerning Genesis 41. It was a moment, not only a moment of great favor, not only a moment of great favor on Joseph's life. And God was about to fulfill not only those two prophetic dreams, but Pharaoh was going to make Joseph second in command to everything. The Lord just said to me something, and this was not even, not even in my mind. The Lord said to me to remind you that in some of my telecasts last year, this year, I said to you that Pharaoh was God's set up man and middle man to Joseph's not only fulfilling, God fulfilling his purpose in Joseph's life. Remember that. God just said that. Now, what I want to also say is this. Remember I said to you that it was 10.55 a.m. And the first thing that God spoke to me was, he said, a day like the day of Pentecost. Then at 11.17 a.m., the Lord said, the sick mint ring. Then I also said to you, from John chapter 5, the angel of the Lord descended, uh, and then I had you write basically before that, the man at the pool of Bethesda. And we're living in this moment. We're living in this time. We're living in the moment also. And you will say, come on, that doesn't make sense. Well, it does make a whole lot of sense to God. It makes a whole lot of sense to this prophet. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because you see John chapter 5, there was a moment there that there was a man at the pool of Bethesda. Then the angel was released by God, sent by God, and he descended and he stirred the waters. Remember, we're living in times of what? Times of preparations, days of preparations, waters of purification. Ephesians 5 verse 26 and 27, but I want you to keep in mind, there is what? The stir. There is a stir that's happening in the atmosphere and in the realm of the spirit. But I also want you to understand something. That I said to you in one of my videos, I believe it was November 11, God's prophecy. I could be wrong. I said in one of those points that it was a time to embrace one another. But what I wanted to say, I talked to you concerning the sound, the wind, a wave, in a breeze. And as I was preparing today, some of these points, a sound, a wind, a wave, God said to me, a breeze. And what you need to understand, that God is basically saying, there is coming like a day, like the day of Pentecost. And I believe that day has everything to do with the rapture and I believe that this revival some call it revival I did name it I did say that myself want to make that very clear and the July showers title but not until the Lord said son it's the final move and the final movement of mine and the Holy Spirit's final move then I said to you that we were at a point that we're watching the rise of the spirit of Delilah, but watch the Islamic mystique, but also not only God speaking 
concerning harlotry on the earth, but also the harlot and also Revelation chapter 17. God has got everything in mind. And basically, what God is establishing is not only in this establishing, basically, God is going to establish not only two things. He's going to allow them to establish a new world order and the, the establishment of God's final move, final outpouring from uh, Joel's 2 and 3, Joel's 1, 2, and 3, despite me saying Joel 1, the global food crisis, despite me saying Joel 2, the wine and the oil, despite me saying Joel 3, verse 2, they divided the land in spite of all that. Jo you need to remember Joel chapter 2 verse, I believe from verse 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, God's final outpouring. But also, you needing to understand that in this outpouring, God changed the saints in believers, and I'm going to tell you what he just said. And he will pour us out on the earth. Watch this. And he will pour us out on the earth as a drink offering. Glory to God. As a drink offering. Because God is God in army. That is totally so ready to allow his Holy Spirit to soak you. Soaks of righteousness. Moving in the power in the glory of God. At a high level, high velocity, high intensity, knocking down everything and everything that you see as a confrontation when it comes to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 12, and 13. Remember Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10? It talks about make sure that you have on the full armor of God. Not only the full of armor of God, but remember we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of this dark world. So we're going into a different level and into a different battle when it comes to the round of the spirit. You need to understand. The Lord said the hordes of hell, Satan's final seduction, Jezebel's final attack. Not only Jezebel's final attack, but remember, there is a girl called Dalala. There is a girl called Athalala, which is the daughter of Jezebel. And then there is the spirit of Ahab. And God has to completely remove that out of the church and out of the saints and believers. He has to. Now, another thing that I want to talk about, that in Genesis Chapter 41, verse 39 to 49. It was a moment that Joseph was highly favored. And what I want to say this, that the grace of God reminded me of something that I said, I think a couple of weeks ago. That the Lord was grieving because he thought that when he the shutdown and the lockdown in 2020 took place, God said that was a moment that he was looking forward for you to allow him to empower you and to bring you into a different level when it comes to the level of his grace, the level of his favor, but the level of his power and the level of anointing. And then he said he was grieving because instead the believers became weaker and weaker and they became not only those that remember I did a title, the faithful are faithless. So very little faith. And they were faithless in the time of the year 2020. And God was grieving. But in this global shaking, God wants me to say in this third video of the establishment. God is establishing his end time army. Not only an army with zero competition. Zero, not only zero competition, not being competitive but being competitive in a sense in the realm of the spirit and being bold with a whole lot, of, whole lot of boldness and confrontational. But let me make this very clear. That, that Joel 2, 
where it talks that final outpouring, we know that in the day of the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, it says that suddenly there came a rushing wind, and like a whirlwind, and there was suddenly something like fire, and they begin to speak in tongues. Well, that's just basically what took place then. But what's about to happen now, in this now moment, now moment, word now moment, the grace of God saying that this is a greater apostolic thrust and a thrust into the church and into the saints to understand one part of God's establishment has to do with his wrath, opening up the seventh seal, the rider in Revelation 6, but the grace of God saying the second part to this whole thing has to do with the third and final crossover. Now, what, why do you need to understand Genesis 41? Because the church has been lacking tremendously an understanding their authority in the kingdom. And God is looking to restore that authority back to you. Perhaps Jezebel has stripped you of that authority. Perhaps you're more afraid now than ever before to step into the unknown and it's become a fear factor. And the grace of God said that when it comes to his church, I'm going to tell you what he said to the believers. He said he sees you not as a failure, but as a victorious child of God. Look what he said. He doesn't see you speaking concerning the leaders in Ephesians 4.11, the body of Christ, and everyone that is born again, every believer and the saints. God sees you not as a failure, but as a victorious child. And he just said to me, as an overcomer. So in this third video of part three of 1111, the establishment, you're going to see that any moment now, the Lord is going to force the entire Christ on the world stage. Let me say this again. Is it possible that the church will still be here? I'm just saying to see who is that lawless one and who he is when he is revealed. Because I can tell you this one thing, that God has every intention for all of civilization to understand that what's going to happen is the start of Jacob's trouble, the start of the great tribulation, the Psalms 83 battle and war. You got Ezekiel 38 in the making. Let me explain more in a more deeper way Ezekiel 37. That rattling noise, I I want you to understand that there is actually already a rattling noise. Let me make this very clear again. There is a rattling noise in the heavens and on the earth. And God took me into a vision where I saw the, the clouds parting away. And that's basically saying that the Lord is going to come out and the world will see Jesus of Nazareth. But also in that rattling shout, that's actually taking place. God shaking the foundations in the heavens and earth, but at a different level. But that basically ushers in the sequence of catastrophic events that will happen in secret global events. Because God said, I believe, in the first video that we did, and in the second, he said the word swiftly. God has every intention to wrap this up. But in this rattling of Ezekiel 37, God rattles the nation of Israel. And it's already been rattled. You saw that, that Hamas broke through the Iron Dome. There is a rattling 
that's happening, but biblically, spiritually, prophetically, it's a profound prophetic moment in the sense of God is putting in place and in perspective, in the order, in the fashion, fashion how God's timeline work and has to do with not only the nation of Israel, but remember, I did a title, September 2023, God's timeline. It also has to do with Luke chapter 21, because I told you about a week ago or 10 days or less ago, the Lord, I was at the kitchen table on a phone call overseas, and the Lord said, learn this lesson from the fig tree. And then he said the word harvest. Now, let me continue with this rattling. This rattling will literally bring in also the removal. The rattling will usher in also not only the sequence of global event and things being removed from the earth and God establishing finally his kingdom, not only his kingdom, his final army, his final remnant, but also giving the globalists and the left and Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet everything that they decide, filling their appetite and establishing this new world order globally around the world and one world government system. Let me make this clear. But also in the rattling, there is a sequence, there is the removal, there is the establishment, watch this, of the weight of his glory the Shekinah glory, but the grace of God's dimension, but also, that also, that rattling causes the third thing. And what the third thing is, let me explain, it's not the third and final crossover, has to do with the changing of the garment, that's one, okay? But that's unhopeful right now. What is part of that rattling also has to do with the coat and the garment, God changing the mantle. Remember I said, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8, God thrusts his sickle on the earth. God, remember, he took me into the vision of the cluster grape. Everything is harvest, it's ripe, it's ready. Redemption. The Lord said, not only that, redemption is knocking at the door, but we're near at the door. And this 11 hour, 11 hour, 11 days, 11 months, the year 2023, the year 2024, suddenly this final global shaking takes place. It's an earthly shaking and a spiritual shaking. The spiritual shaking take place at the same time because it brings in the great conversion. Then you say, well, you didn't explain the removal. God has to remove, watch what he said, back quick. I'm gonna tell you how quick he said this. You would say, well, can you explain more the removal? When I said that to you, God said the yeast. God has to remove the yeast. Uh, the Not only the yeast, but the corruption, the deception, not only the deception, but remember he said to tell you, to remind you to write two things. One of them was what? Harlotry. He has to go re-establish. Let me say that. You heard me say that for the first time. First time in the three short video. Re-establish biblical truth back into the hearts and the souls and the believers and into their spirit to understand that nothing tainted, nothing that has any blemish, nothing that's tarnished can ever enter the kingdom of God. So what God has to do with the removal, are you ready? This has to do with the removal. God makes you into an unleavened bread believer, but an unblemished vessel. Glory to God. Unleavened bread believer, an unblemished vessel. Now let me tell you what he, when I said that to you the first time, he said, understand. Remember that I did a video and the grace of God 
In that video, I explained to you that I heard the voice of the Archangel Michael. And God came the day before, and the grace of God spoke from where? Matthew chapter 16. He said, the gates of hell should not prevail. But he said to understand and be concerned concerning the apostasy and the heresy in the world and in the church. Amen. But apostasy and heresy and the falling away. That has to do with the removal. Let me explain also more about the removal. You can never be found or fall into God's category. I'm talking when it comes to his in child remnant. If you don't die to self, die, die to selfishness, and stop chasing material things in this world. Remember he said, do not love the world or the things of the world. Another thing that you need to understand in the establishment, where is a future thing that will be fulfilled. What? John chapter 4. Remember verse 23 and 24. It talks about that there will be a time when my people will worship me, what? In spirit, in truth. So there is a battle since the time and before the existence of the foundations of the heaven and earth. There has been a battle since the moment where Lucifer, and you need to understand, since the time of Ezekiel 28, where God gives an overwhelming description how he made Lucifer perfect and how Lucifer fell from grace. And then there is also, not only there, but then there is Isaiah 14. Oh, Lucifer, how have you fallen? And what you need to understand, that God is bringing up this thing right now. This is not even on my mind. This blows my mind away. God is bringing up not only the October 14, God's prophecy, October 14, 2023, where he said, the star from the north, two days prior, October 12, 2023, he said a single star. Then the grace of God said, the third thing that he said was what? He said a, a cloudy day is approaching the earth. God said what? That in the October 14, in the October 14, 2023 title, God said a cloudy day and a dark day is approaching the earth soon. Look, you need to understand when the grace of God speaks and what he's trying to say prophetically, what does he mean when it comes to what he's trying to tell all of civilization and the whole world when God speaks prophetically, not just to me, but to great men and women. When God says what? He says a star from the north. Then he says, a cloudy and dark day is approaching the earth soon. Then two days before, he says what? He says that the, he says a single star. Then in one of my telecasts last week, he opens the window and he showed me that the clouds parted away. And you basically know that it has to do with Titus 2.13, where we will see that blessed hope from Titus 2.13. Glory to God. But the removal, the removal have to do with what? God removing the yeast and the effect infection. And remember, I said that since the early 2000s, and especially 2008, the grace of God has been speaking to me to go into all the nations and speak concerning that God was about to what? Revolutionize. Revolutionize the nations, and also world leaders. And remember, one of the things that God is showing me is the word reshuffle. God is reshuffling. And I have said, ever since 2020 and 2021, that pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets and apostles and those that have apostolic teams and those that are prophets, pastors, 
as also known as prophets, but they're pastors, need to prophetically bring their, their leaders into alignment, but they needed to reshuffle. Remember I said they will be a God, into God, and guide you. Why would God bring that up? Why would God have me be stuck on and explain the removal? Because there is the establishment. There is the final mobilization. And then there is the escalation. One is spiritual. Two, it's not spiritual at all. God said that just as you see war intensifying, and it will increase and go globally in total confusion. And God said what? He will bring them into what? Into a delusional state of mind. God will use Satan to move, move their emotions, the globalist, the left, the false prophet, the antichrist, and God also what? Using Satan to move them. And then what you got? Global pandemic, global chaos, global confusion, God's establishment, establishing once and for all his kingdom forever. He reigns forever. Not only he is seated in the heavenly places, God still speak, God still reign, he's unbeatable. No one can match the name of Jesus and everyone is subject to that name of Jesus. Keep that in mind and every knee will bow down and confess. So in this stir, in this stir, there is the establishment. There is the final mobilization. You know what the grace of God just said to me? final phase. There is a final phase. And then there is the removal. Then I said to you, that also in that removal, it's a spiritual one, but also one an earthly one. Where God not only removes the old anointing on you, place it, places a greater anointing, and now you're moving in the glory of God in power and glory, and God does all this with having full control of the clock from right from his pavilion and right from his throne in glory, right from the throne. And then God said to me to give you this PowerPoint. Watch this. God said that part of this establishment, part of the coat, the garment, and the third and final crossover and the changing of the garment was this? Let me explain. God said what took place in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8. I want leaders to listen here. What exactly took place in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8? I'm going to tell you what exactly happened. One was a spiritual event, a historical, spiritual, significant moment, just like over what just happened over in the nation of Israel. That's a historical moment. That's a war that it would intensify and increase and lead to the battle of Psalms 83 war and battle and to the Ezekiel war. But it leads to what? Ezekiel 37 to shake it. Keep that in mind. Now let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8. What God showed me, and God showed me is this, that that event that took place between Elijah and Elijah, you need to understand, it was a sp spiritual historical moment. One event and one encounter was this, that Elijah was being taken up what? In a whirlwind. And a chariot of horses and fire appeared and they took Elijah up alive. The other was the changing of the garment, the changing of the mantle. One crossed over to life, to eternity. The other one is still standing where? On earth because Elijah had to now take over the mantle of Elijah, but on top of his mantle, and he got a double portion. What God is about to release is a double portion and also the weight of his glory, but the dimensions of his power. And he closes this thing in the end of civilization, the end of this thing, and also the rapture call taking place, the harpasso, 
what happens here. One event was spiritual. The guy was taken alive. The other one is still standing. He changed the cloak. He changed the garment. But remember, Elijah threw the cloak, threw the mantle. That's why you need to understand why God saying acceleration. God saying it swiftly. God said that everything that we have spoken, and since the time that he called me, he said, son, I want you to understand, not a single word you speak or utter will come from you. It will come from me, and out of that divine utterance, out of my spirit, I release it to your spirit to release it to the entire body of Christ. It's God's building now his final battle axe, man and woman to be battle axe, but his final generals. God is building generals in this final hour. That's why he said earlier to understand what he said the yeast. He said what? Unleavened bread believer, an unblemished vessel. And then what's in the making of that? The third and final crossover. But before that, the shakings of the foundations of the heaven and earth. A natural one and a spiritual one. Two different cats. The left and the right. The ungodly and the wicked. And God, let me show you, because I'm really into this part three of this video, of this part three of the title called 1111, The Establishment. This is the third video. The grace of God wants you to understand that the glory of God is saying this, that that stir and that movement is greater since the day of Pentecost. I'm going to tell you another thing. That stir that's coming, the final stir, and remember, I put it on the thumbnail. It's even greater, watch this, write this down, since the moment of the time where Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. Because what's happening, it's what's also coming, is 2 Kings chapter 9, as I told you, the Jehu's anointing in his account mandate and the battle of Armageddon, the battle of Psalms 83, the battle in the realm of the spirit, God removing the old anointing out of you. I haven't said this verse in years. God said to me, Isaiah 10, 27, the anointing is the burning, removing, yoke, destroying power of God. Tell somebody, your anointing is about to change. Tell somebody, you're about to operate at a different level. Tell somebody, you're about to experience a different level of his glory. God is about to establish your name on the earth. Tell somebody, God is about to bring not only his glory, amen, and the weight of his glory, but he is saying to tell everyone one and every believer that is so that God see as part of his in time unblemished vessel vessels of honor vessels of gold jaws of clay but vessels of honor but also unleavened bread believer God is saying that this is also a season where at a moment where he thrusts the sickle on the earth God causes not only Hosea chapter 6 Verse 1 and 3, not only Hosea chapter 6, verse 1, 3, he calls us Hosea 10, 12, but also in that, in that rattling sound of Ezekiel 37, in that stir, in that removal, and in the removing, God is saying there is an apostolic mandate. There is a Russian wind, and the glory of God must not only reestablish and bring about and pull in full gear the authority in which he blessed every believer with. And you're going to blossom. That's why I said when the world is confused, what did I tell you? The church blossomed. So why are you worried? Why are you concerned? Why are you fearing? Why are you staring down at your circumstances or your challenges? Is he not God? Is his arm too short to say? Well, I want to remind you that the Bible says that the Lord will never forsake the righteous. He will never forsake you. The only thing that God is doing, are you ready? Remember last week, I told you that God is in the business of what? Building blocks. Let me say this again. God is in the business of what? Building blocks in establishing not only those blocks, because I told you for the last several years, a thing called unbalanced blocks. A 
and God has to balance everything. And once God balances everything out, amen, everything is established. The final mobilization, not only the final mobilization, God's sending warnings, but God's stirring. There's warnings to the world, warning to humanity, warnings to civilization, but God's stirring the saints and the believers and the leaders of Ephesians 4.11 to also to remind you, you got to begin to reshuffle your leaders or somehow bring them into alignment. And the grace of God said these things. Are you ready? You get to re get ready to receive it. Because that moment between Elisha and Elisha, there is a spiritual crossover. There is a moment when one's still standing. He's still standing, but he received a double portion. Not only still standing, but I'm going to tell you, he did twice more miracles than Elijah. He did 16, I believe. And the glory of God said, he's about to throw his sickle. He's about to throw a different mantle on you. He's about to throw a different level of his blessing on you. He's about to throw a different level of his glory. And the glory of God is going to overwhelmingly captivate your soul. <laughs> glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Someone ought to shout and praise God. Because you know what? Remember I told you to write in the first video, write what? 10.55 a.m. like a day, like the day of Pentecost. Then I have also said to you to write Genesis 41. Then I told you to write what? Right next to it, write verse 39 to 41, write a segment ring, then I had you write Haggai 2.23. Then I told you to write the day before, and I told you how 1111 came about and was birthed. The day before, and I didn't even have this in mind, God changed me and reminds me of Jeremiah 11, verse 11. And look, I'll be blessed and totally blessed and blessed out of my socks. If there is a man or a woman that wants to take charge and speak on GMI 11.11, because you don't only have GMI 11.11, 11.11 title, moment, okay, a moment of transition. We're living in the greatest moment, victorious moment, where the Lord said, you're not a failure, but a victorious child of God. So God shows me 11.11. But then God showed me several weeks ago, months ago, he showed me Ezekiel chapter 2. Then prior to doing this third part, the third short video, which is not short any longer, the Lord reminded me, Ezekiel 5, Ezekiel 6, Ezekiel 7, and God say, look, one third of mankind being wiped out the Holocaust, but in that moment of the Holocaust, God wants you to understand he is revamping. He is structured, and in that structure, God wants you to understand there is the coat, there is the garment, there is the weight of his glory, there is the changing of the garment, but wait a minute, God said to remind you, it was like the day when the archangel came, and when the archangel Michael came, he said to me, he said to me these words, not only he spoke to me, but he mentioned his name. He personally came out and called me by my name and then personally introduced himself. Then he went on to touch on Matthew chapter 16. Remember this, that the gates of hell should not prevail. And remember, I spoke to you and did a title concerning a one world religion and what I want to say. That despite of Matthew 16, and despite of that title, One World Religion, or this inner faith, or whatever this digital currency, or whatever they want to put together and establish, one thing God has got in mind is establishing the saints and the believers to move in power, to move in glory, and then the grace of God show me. And I saw the clouds moving quickly and rotating, the rotation and the movement of the cloud, accelerating that pace. God shit in him changing your mind, flipping your mind, not only flipping your mind and changing your mind, but cultivating and captivating your mind and cultivating your seed. The grace of God is speaking loud and clear. In this third video, 
short video <laughs> where the grace of God saying that we're coming into the moment also of difficult times, hard times, Genesis 37 to 50, but to keep in mind, God will always sustain the believers. God will always sustain you. There's no need to fret and be afraid. And I want the church to celebrate because last week, let me get to my point. Last week, when the glory of God came to me, the grace of God said to me, the word sound, the word wind, and the word wave. I also want to go ahead and give you some of the things that the Lord said a few days ago, and I would like to share them with you. The grace of God said to me at 11.34 a.m. on November 9, 2023, he said to me, son, death will be swallowed up forever, Isaiah 25, 8. And then he will wipe away all our tears. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more infirmity, no more concern, having not no longer looking down on your circumstances or, your, or the issues of life or the issues of this world or perhaps the issues or issues in your heart. God simply restoring your soul, the power of redemption, redeeming the time. And God saying, also the grace of God saying, Ezekiel 37, the rattling sound. And not only the rattling sound, but when he spoke to me on November 9, 2023, the grace of God, after speaking to me from Isaiah 25, 8, he said, Ezekiel 37, then he said to me, the regathering in the gathering. And what I want you to know is suddenly, 11, 11 titles turns into one of the most prolific, epic titles and messages ever on the face of the earth. Because basically, God is sounding the alarm and God saying, what you got here is basically everything accelerate, everything intensify, is God's got one thing, to establish his kingdom once and for all, and to finally throw Lucifer, that devil, into the lake of fire with the false prophet in the Antichrist in every single person that has ever rejected God or his son or the Holy Spirit. You see, that's why part three of the title 1111, the establishment, it's only going to get better. But when we get to PowerPoint four, watch out. It's even more glorious. We still because the good Lord not only gave me the point to that, but I'm going to speak to you part four very soon. But until, remember that word until, and until then, and until now. Remember Daniel 7, verse 21, 22? That was then when God spoke to Daniel, the greatest prophet ever. But that 7th chapter of Daniel, verse 21, 22, has not been fulfilled. And also, let me say this again. Genesis 1, 1 is still not complete. And the grace of God saying, basically, John chapter 4, verse 23-24. It's not only the battle, the battle for souls, the battle for worship, who's, worship, who's going to worship who? And basically, everyone that's standing on the right is worshiping the one in true and living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And the Lord just said to me, are you ready? The Lord said to me, he said, Jacob's well. And remember, to you shepherds and pastors, God has been telling you that it's time to reshuffle your leaders or bring your leaders into alignment. Word upon word, precinct upon precinct, line upon line. 
Some of your leaders are nothing but what? Dead bones. And I don't, I have to tell it like it is. Remember Joel 1 verse 12? And the sons of men at the time of the prophet Joel, their bones wither away and they had no joy. But thank God, tell somebody, thank God that the grace of God will take the church out in the fullness of joy. I wanted to come and do the third video to the title, part three, 1111, called The Establishment. Did video one, video two, video three, but I feel like God is not wanting me to stop with a fourth or fifth video when it comes to the establishment. Be the glory of God said to me, are you ready? And there's reasons why. I said fourth, fifth, or whatever. How many videos on the establishment of part three, 1111? The grace of God said immediately and so quickly, God said he's going to establish one thing. And that thing is this, that he's going to put a sick mint ring on your finger. Kingdom authority running, amen, in blazing glory and blazing speed. But understanding that we're now approaching also Ezekiel chapter 1 and also the times of Elijah, the times of David. In the times of Moses, and you can include Jeremiah in that category. May the Lord so richly bless you. Remember to click like, share, subscribe, hit on the bell to receive our latest telecast. And I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.